you're referencing liberal and all that, but it's really not a partisan issue. It's a constitutional issue of personal freedoms. And right, exactly. And, and this is something that uh, people need to, to realize, and, and it does cross the party lines. In fact, at this point, I, you know, I, I was a lifelong Republican. I uh, worked with, with Ronald Reagan uh, during his campaigns for president. But right now I consider myself an independent. I'm not happy with either party. There have been, there's been too much going on uh, in the past few years, and this goes back into the Bush administration, too many areas where the constitutional rights of the American people are being ignored. And the government is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when I use the phrase, uh, you know, uh, liberal and conservative, uh, the liberals are, the, are, you know, primarily the people I see that, that want more power of the government. Conservatives have traditionally opposed this, but there are a lot of people that would classify themselves as liberal who are getting quite concerned right now about the fact that individual liberties are being lost in this country. And so it, it's basically a nonpartisan issue. We're talking about the Constitution, and the Constitution wasn't set up uh, to benefit any particular political party. I don't want to take us off course, but I want to ask you a quick question about TSA and these airport scanners. Chertoff is on the board of directors of the company that makes all these whole body scanners at the airports that they're looking to put in around America and around the world. Are they constitutional? Whole body scanners in the airport. I have to be radiated to fly. I am so upset about this. This is so terrible. The exposure to radiation for people who fly. And I wondered on a constitutional level, what's your perspective on this? Well, from a constitutional, strictly a constitutional standpoint, yes. it probably is constitutional. Uh, and the reason being is because people have choices. They don't have to fly. Uh, as long as you know people have a choice that they can avoid the airport, they don't have to fly if they don't want to, and uh, it would probably be held to be constitutional. That doesn't mean I agree with it. It doesn't mean that I like the idea of the full body scanners because I think that they you know uh, they can possibly pose a health threat. But from a standpoint of if it went to the Supreme Court, how they would decide it, I think they would probably decide that it's constitutional. Even if it impairs the health of the people that go through them? We well, know this if, from radiation. I mean, we even know this from flying. Well, if that could be proved, then it would be a different situation. The Supreme Court would have to look at the individual rights of the people to maintain their health as opposed to the, the rights of the uh, airlines and uh, the government to uh, have increased security in airports. So, again, this is something that if the Supreme Court looked at it from that standpoint that if it does impair your health, uh, then they very well could strike it down as being unconstitutional as an infringement on the individual's right uh, to maintain their health in a healthy environment. I don't mind being frisked or checked physically. That's not the issue. Do you think that I have a right when I go through an airport and I'm traveling a lot to ask them to frisk me rather than to go through these scanners? I would think you should have that right, yes. Yeah, I'm going to find out. I'm actually going to call TSA and Homeland Security and find out. If that's an yeah, option. I think, that, um, I think that's that would, an important option. It's not like somebody's not willing to be checked, but they don't want to be radiated. Right. I, you know? I think you should have that right, yes. So you are doing a lot of teaching in evidence law, constitutional law, courtroom strategy, and business law for education to go, an online company providing courses for numerous universities. What else are you doing now? You have your own radio show that you host? I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's on later today. It's uh, at 3 o'clock uh, Central Time, and it originates uh, It's on the Internet. It originates out of uh, uh, Sandy Springs, Georgia, which is right outside of Atlanta. And I'm doing it. It's called Our Constitution. And uh, if people go to my blog, and uh, they can find access to the link to the radio show, because all the shows are archived, so they can listen to them anytime they want to. In addition, I'm also doing another uh, show about once a month. I'm a guest on the uh, Tea Party Radio, which is uh, out of California. And uh, the excerpts from that show are also archived on uh, that website. And are actually, they're, they're putting the, the excerpts from that show that I'm doing, they're putting that on YouTube also. Why is the Tea Party getting such a bad rap on the traditional channels for television? Well, it's because of, uh, the uh, media, uh, particularly
particularly the, the media that supports big government, uh, they're scared to death of the Tea Party people. Uh, because this is a movement. This is not a new political party. This is a grassroots movement that spread, has uh, appeared really out of nowhere by people who are very angry. You've got people of, of all races and all backgrounds. You've got people who consider themselves on the left and people who consider themselves on the right. They're all united doing one thing, and that is telling the federal government, get off our backs. We don't want you trampling on our constitutional rights. And that type of upheaval is something that uh, hasn't occurred in this country for a long time. And so the Tea Party groups are going to be under constant attack by the, uh, the far left and by the uh, people in the media who basically see the whole philosophy that they have is that you and I and all of us in the great unwashed masses in the, out in the United States, we're too stupid to know what's good for us. That only your elites, only your, your people that in the uh, national news networks, only your people in Congress, uh, your government bureaucrats, the President of the United States, they are the ones that should be making our decisions for us. We're too dumb to make decisions for ourselves. And they, so that's why they push the philosophy of a big government, a nanny government. You know, President Obama, I see him as wanting to be the nanny in chief. And so that, you know, every aspect of our lives will be controlled. They're looking at an uprising among Americans, and they call it the Tea Party, and they can call it whatever they want, but it's an uprising among Americans who are saying, we don't buy into that. We are not dumb. We do know what's happening to us. We don't want a nanny government. We don't want the federal government taking control of our lives. We want to continue to be free people. And... That's why it's, it's so scary to the elites, what I call the elites. What is your constitutional take on forced vaccinations or mandatory vaccinations? Uh, really, that's something that I, I haven't really looked into. But uh, the mandatory vaccinations, again, I think that that's a situation where individuals should be able to make the choice for themselves. I don't think that the federal government should be able to mandate something like that. Uh, in uh, so that's more or less a libertarian take on it, but being the way I am and being for individual rights, I think that forced vaccinations would probably be, is a violation of the Constitution, uh, particularly when you deal with a situation, and this is uh, something interesting that can affect the health care bill too, is if people have religious objections to something like that, those should be upheld. And it's interesting that in the health care bill, one religious group is excluded from it. That's the Amish. But no other religious groups are. That's interesting. That violates the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. I think if people have religious objections to uh, buying health insurance, religious objections to vaccinations, that they ought to be able to, to opt out and not, have, not be forced to do that. You're going to be needed on so many fronts to do more and more teaching and illuminating to the public what they need to be thinking about and standing for. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking to Michael Connolly, who has been practicing constitutional law for 27 years. He's teaching and writing about it. You can reach him at www.michaelconnolly.viviti.com. Michael, how do people reach you? Is there an email or is there a contact number? Uh, well, the uh, on my blog site, they can find my contact information. Okay. Uh, they can find my email. They can find uh, an address if they want to write to me. Uh, but uh, there's, there's the contact information is there on the blog. I really appreciate your time and participation today, and I hope you'll come back and talk to us again. I'd be glad to, Kim. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Michael.